The Twin Towers is a dive site up on the north side of Little Yost Van Dyke. Off of a little spot you'll see on the nautical chart, it's called Pelican Key. Very few people can find the site. Um, they want to go into the protected cove, but the actual dive site's very exposed to the Atlantic swells. It's two monolithic sized boulders that are sitting down on 86 foot bottom on the sand. And even though everybody's attention is always drawn to the massive house sized boulders where there's beautiful swim through and a couple little nice caves underneath, you know, I always keep my eye out in the blue water because that's where we've spotted some of the biggest tiger sharks in the British Virgin Islands. This is a dive site that uh, we don't consider advanced in any form other than the fact that it's 86 foot. We do it as a multi-level dive. We like to max it out at 45 minutes as a first dive and if it's a second dive then we tend to keep it more in the shallow part so we'll do a majority of the dive in 35 to 45 feet of water. It's a very large dive site and uh, we're looking forward to seeing some big groupers and lots of different reef fish down on the dive. The cathedral is an incredible shallow water dive that we use as a second dive off the end of the western end of Jos van Dijk. And uh, the incredible thing about the cathedral is, uh, which has also been called by some people Collins Canyons, we call it the cathedral because we discovered a room where you can actually swim through a cave system and come up inside of the island of Jos van Dijk. There's a 75 foot tall ceiling where some light comes in and it's absolutely just a majestic, um, awe-inspiring experience, thus the name the cathedral. But I've had other guests to call it Collins Canyons because we just spent a little bit of time actually in the cave system. Most of the dive is going through some really extreme vertical walls that are just painted walls in soft corals and sponges, literally every color of the spectrum down there. It's a really exciting dive for marine biologists because not only do we see an incredible variety of fish, but we've also got some incredible invertebrate life on this site. We, we have some alluvial rocks that vary in all kinds of sizes, but when we can get down to one that we can grab a hold of, maybe a 30, 40 pound rock, we'll actually flip the rocks over and see many different varieties of starfish. Way too many for me to name in a short video clip, but you'd have to get out your uh, deep Paul Hooman uh, reef check book because you got to get deep into this to figure out what we're looking at. All the marine biologists that I take on this site want to spend all their time just flipping over rocks looking, looking for these rare invertebrates. But it's also a big animal site too, and we spot dolphins on the site probably I would say about one out of every four dives and I can tell from a couple other charter yachts that that's a very ideal statistic. And the reason for that is we've got about 120 feet of water right off the edge of the dive site and large amounts of bonito, which is a small type of a tuna, Atlantic bonito, come into the area and that's what the dolphins are feeding on. So we've had many National Geographic experiences over off of the cathedral. It's always an exciting sight and uh, you can typically hear them clicking, the dolphins clicking and squeaking before we actually get to the site. So it's exciting. Exciting. The secret wreck that you guys uh, are getting exposed to from Dive Zero uh, is one of these stumbled upon kind of uh, once in a lifetime dreams fulfilled events. Um, I've done a lot of blue water diving and one of the things that, well before we were busy we had a lot of slow summers, now we're getting a little bit busier, but what I like to do is grab an instructor or a buddy and just drop out in the blue water. And we'll go out where there's a 100 foot bottom or 75 foot bottom or where we might see a little anomaly on a depth sounder and just drop down out in the blue on those perfectly flat days. And on those days, most of the time when you go down you see absolutely nothing. It's like diving on a lunar landscape and you can't see anything at all. But on one particular day, um, I had just come back from sailing a yacht from uh, Joost van Dyke to the Azores of Portugal to the south of France, and a two-month adventure with a friend of mine from France, and we came back, and there was nothing going on in Joost van Dyke, so we went out for a blue water dive, and um, expecting to not see anything, we were just out there just cruising around, and uh, my friend Stefan said he came up behind me and saw me just standing there on the bottom, and my buoyancy control is perfect, as you guys know, but I was standing up on the bottom with my hands in the air and there I was looking at the bow of a wreck which we did some research on. We found some numbers up inside. Since we found the wreck a couple years ago, um, the cabin sole has been blown away in a storm, but um, we found numbers inside engraved. We did some research and the boat was built in 1949 in Amsterdam, Holland. And um, 
was plying Hawaii and also down islands in the 60s. And after that, we really don't know. We don't know what happened to the wreck. We don't know how it got there. But it's not any Disneyland cookie cutter wreck where they got out all the polishing wheels and they, you know, cleaned up all the rough edges and all the pokey pointy areas that can catch it. This is the real thing. On our uh, eco experience with Dive Zero, we uh, had the luxury of being able to take a family up to Virgin Gorda, as we do several times a week for people staying over on Yost Van Dyke and on Tortola. And it's a private experience that's uh, you know off the beaten path and definitely uh, you know for the discerning type of a traveler. You know our idea of eco tourism is contrary to the Caribbean-based rum punch type of tourism that everybody's making a living doing. You know anybody can give you a rum punch at nine in the morning, push you over the side of the boat and tow the reefs over there. But we actually take you onto the reef and identify the fish and the marine life and tell people the little things, you know, about what the purpose of a sea cucumber is and, you know, the parrot fish, how they change sexes and, you know, all kinds of different interesting facts. On our trip to Virgin Gorda, uh, we're fortunate enough to be able to take Dive Zero's crew and this family over to the Baths, which has been called by some one of the seven natural wonders of the world. I don't know about that, but I can tell you that it is a magical place to visit for the day. Uh, we typically like to get there in the afternoon because in the mornings there's a lot of tourists there and a lot of the cattle boats from St. Thomas and St. John run people up. So we try to get there after lunch. And basically the Bass <clears throat> is a national park that is comprised of Devil's Bay and then Spring Bay at the other end. And it's monolithic size boulders that at one time were embedded in lava. Now geologically speaking, they're made of granite, but there are also many other types of minerals involved in those composite rocks. Those are hornblende, biotite, feldspar, chalcedony, quartz, and many different other, other minerals as well. Exploring the baths is exciting because it's really just a big playground for kids and adults of all ages. You've got these house-sized boulders that are stacked in from several hundred feet high going down into the water, and it creates all these beautiful natural grottos and swim-throughs and little cave systems, and you can literally explore it for days on end. It's really exciting. What makes it a real world-class snorkeling uh, experience is the fact that nowhere else in the Eastern Caribbean outside of the Baths and the island right beside it called Fallen Jerusalem, do you actually have a chance to swim in these massive boulders? So above the water, you'll see these boulders sitting in 30, 40, 50 foot depths and you'll see the peaks coming out. But as soon as you get to the water line and down below, they're covered in hard and soft corals and reef fish of every description. So being able to swim amongst these boulders and in these little grottos creates some absolutely spectacular experiences that are really off the beaten path for snorkeling. I got something better than a letter of reference for all you dive shops out there that want to get some exposure and do something different. The crew with Dive Zero, Luke and Rob, are first class, and these guys know what they're doing. They're cutting edge, and they're going to be somebody. Down the road, they're building up a project right here that has no limits. We've been diving with them for two weeks. They're gentlemen. They're polite. They know how to get along with the tourists, and I've been fortunate to be able to expose them to ecotourism and scuba diving in every way, shape, and form in our out-island experience with Yost Van Dyke Scuba and B-Value Ecotours. I advise you guys to hook up with Dive Zero.